let's face it, Linux is one of the best operating systems out there. One of its primary benefits is that it's free, right? I mean, you don't have to pay to download or use the OS. You don't have to muck around with license keys or activation, and that's pretty awesome. But if you're anything like me, you might be thinking, there's no such thing as a free lunch. And that's correct. The, the fact of the matter is, Linux is the collective effort of thousands of developers over the last 30 years, amounting to some untold millions of man hours. And the people who've coded Linux into existence have to eat. So what gives? What's the catch? Well, that's where the Linux daddies come in. The corporations that have paid their employees to make Linux what it is today. Over Linux's decades-long development, companies like Canonical, Red Hat, AMD, Intel, Samsung, IBM, Google, and yes, even Facebook and Microsoft have contributed code to the kernel. So we thought it would be fun and informative to take a look at just a handful of contributions from each company. So let's start with Microsoft. Yep, we begin with the elephant in the room. <laughs> Back in 2001, Steve Ballmer, then CEO, famously referred to Linux as a cancer. 15 short years later, and Microsoft joins the Linux Foundation. Microsoft loves Linux, don't you know? Well, last year, Microsoft submitted a patch to the kernel to create a complete virtualization stack uh, with Linux and Microsoft's hypervisor. In fact, they've made several contributions to the kernel for their cloud hosting service, Azure. In another case, Microsoft has customized the Linux kernel to create Windows subsystem for Linux, uh, which they've added kernel endpoints to access the host's DirectX configuration through the virtualized Linux machine. And they've also made contributions to kernel 5.12 to include integrity measurement architecture support to measure kernel critical data based on policy. Their patch also uses IMA to calculate hashes before opening programs or files, adding to the security of the system overall. Next up, IBM. Now, IBM is one of the top 10 contributors to the Linux kernel uh, and has been for years. And in 2018, IBM acquired Red Hat, another one of the top 10 contributors to the Linux kernel. They acquired them for $34 billion. IBM invested $1 billion into Linux in 2001. At that point, Linux was then made available to all IBM servers and even powered the wristwatch that they ended up making. Later on, they co-founded the Open Invention Network. This initiative defends open source projects, including the Linux kernel, against attacks by patent holders. They also took part in the creation of the Linux Foundation. And although IBM's contributions to Linux largely go to support their own products, they also contribute to such things as scalability, robustness, security, and other areas that benefit the entire Linux ecosystem. One example of IBM's work that was accepted into the Linux kernel was its journaling file system, or JFS. Though IBM mentions that they never actually achieved the level of popularity that they had hoped for. Another contribution, which turned out to be huge, was their ability to allow the Linux kernel to run on more than two or four CPUs. Now Linux can support servers with thousands of CPUs and terabytes upon terabytes of memory. And how about your Android device or other portable gadget that runs on the Linux kernel? IBM, as well as a bunch of other companies, had a hand in that as well. They also helped improve the battery life of these devices, which in turn improves the kernel's virtualization techniques. Keeping track of changes made to the kernel can be tough, and that's why IBM introduced the next integration tests. This checks for conflicts between the patches that are submitted in the next merge window. Kernel testing can now be done right away with the first release candidate rather than having to wait for the third or the fourth due to bugs that may have come from the previous release. All right, next up we have AMD. Now AMD has contributed a whole lot to the kernel, particularly for their CPUs and graphics cards. Just for kernel 5.15 in particular, they implemented the Van Gogh APU audio driver. This is particularly useful for the Steam Deck. They fixed the suspend and resume functions for laptops, particularly with the HP Envy series. They added temperature monitoring for Zen 3 APUs. They fixed the AMD GPU power management. They added HDMI FreeSync. They fixed PCI Express link handling among many, many other improvements. AMD has also worked extensively with Valve to improve CPU frequency and power scaling, which will enhance the Proton gaming experience on the Steam Deck and other computers running AMD hardware. 
Next up, we have Intel. Intel introduced Software Guard Extensions, or SGX, starting with kernel 5.11. This feature creates private memory locations called enclaves that are encrypted and cannot be accessed by any other process. They later enhanced this feature with the second revision, SGX2, which offers the ability to modify permissions for regular enclave pages belonging to an enclave, support for the dynamic addition of regular enclave pages to an enclave, support for removing pages from an enclave, and expanding an enclave to allow more threads. These patches were submitted just a few days ago, so we don't currently know when they'll be merged into the mainline kernel. Of course, much of Intel's contributions to the kernel are there to support their CPUs and eventually their dedicated GPUs like their Alchemist line. They've added support for Alder and Raptor Lake chips, making fixes for those families of processors. They've added variable refresh rate to 11th and 12th gen CPUs, and they've made the Intel graphics compiler specifically for Linux. Next up, we have Google. Now, Google is interested in keeping the kernel exposed to the fewest number of exploits as possible. This is proved by the fact that until the end of January, they'll pay as much as $50,337 to any security researcher who can find a vulnerability in the kernel. They even admit in their blog post that, quote, much of the internet and Google, from the devices in our pockets to the services running on Kubernetes in the cloud, depends on the security of the Linux kernel. But besides that, they're looking to make patches for the kernel. For example, in June, Google open sourced Fibers, a user space scheduling framework, and now they want it mainlined into the kernel. It doesn't seem like it has been yet, but it'll be interesting to see the benefits that this could bring. Another example is User Managed Concurrency Groups, or UMCG. As Google puts it, UMCG is, quote, an M by N threading system toolkit that lets user space application developers implement in-process user space schedulers, which sounds like a bunch of jargon to me. <laughs> Now, next up, we have kind of a surprising one. Believe it or not, Facebook has contributed to the kernel for everyone's benefit. For one, they wrote a new slab memory controller, which based on their testing, when using a web front end, it used 42% less slab memory. A database caching server used around 35% less and a DNS server used around 36% less. There's also less memory fragmentation with this new implementation. Another project that engineers at Facebook are working on is Bolt, or Binary Optimization and Layout Tool. By adding this to the kernel, Linux and ELF executables run faster. Facebook is also partly responsible for BetterFS. For those of you who aren't aware, BetterFS brings a number of benefits over ext4, such as support for larger files and partition sizes, the ability to use snapshots when a disaster strikes, and built-in file compression. All right, next up we have System76. Now, a lot of the Linux kernel contains drivers by various hardware manufacturers. That's why so many companies contribute to the kernel. System76 is no exception. System76 makes hardware specifically with Linux in mind, and as such, kernel 5.16 adds a number of benefits to their laptops, including a fix for the function F2 hotkey not working correctly on OLED models of their laptops, being able to see CPU and GPU temperature and fan speeds, and battery charging thresholds support. Another hardware company that specializes in Linux systems is Purism. They've contributed to the kernel 5.14 and 5.15 to add support for their Librem 5 smartphone, adding drivers for the device's cameras, improving SD card power management, as well as optimizing power usage for Wi-Fi, battery, and audio, and a whole lot more. Canonical is the company behind Ubuntu, and they've also contributed to the kernel. In kernel 4.13, they added their AppArmor security changes, which included bug fixes, symlink support for security FS, domain labeling based code, and various other cleanups. And finally, we have Collabora. Collabora has played an important role in Linux gaming. In kernel 5.16, they added Futex to uh, system calls, uh, including Futex Wait V. Long story short, this should give games, particularly those running through Proton and Wine, a performance increase by at least a few percentage points. They've also improved the Linux support for Chromebooks powered by Tegra. Now, obviously, this is only a small fraction of the companies that have contributed to Linux over the years. Uh, I just wanted to highlight a few of the bigger and lesser known uh, companies out there. But you might be asking yourself, I thought Linux was made by individuals. How many people, how many individuals actually contributed to Linux? Well, according to the 2017 report by the Linux Foundation, kernel 5.13 saw 1,681 developers and 225 companies working on it. Kernel 4.13 saw commits from 1,681 developers and 225 companies. According to this report, 8.2% of these developers, about 
138 of them, were individual volunteers and not sponsored by any company. So as we've seen, Linux is comprised of many different companies with different goals in mind. Facebook wants to speed things up to reduce their overhead. Google wants to close holes in kernel security. And there are many hardware vendors who want their drivers merged into the kernel. These companies employ their staff to work together on the largest collaborative effort in the history of mankind. Even though most of the people who work on the kernel get paid, it's free to use for you and me because of its licensing. But it would be fair to say that without the support of these companies, Linux wouldn't be anywhere near where it is today. But I'd like to know what you think. What are your thoughts on the Linux daddies that keep the Linux world spinning? Let me know in the comments. I think that's going to do it for now. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're all having a great day. Uh, if you're so inclined, you want to see more videos like this, hit that like button. It lets us know that you're enjoying this content and lets us know where to go next with our content. Uh, you can also subscribe if that's more your speed. I want to say thank you to all my friends on Patreon and my YouTube members. Uh, if, without you guys, I wouldn't be able to do this. So thank you. Uh, that's going to do it for now, though. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope you all have a blessed day.